What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel and welcome to part two of the series where I show you how to build your own WizBlock solar box for Meshtastic. In this video we'll be mounting the solar panel to the enclosure and putting together all of the internals. So hang around and we'll get into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Here we have all the components that go into this solar whiz block box, and I'll have links to everything in the video description below. This build will be slightly different and more cost effective than the box you saw in the intro video. The changes are a different antenna, that is SMA instead of an end connector, and a single battery instead of the two battery setup that was in the original. The solar panel has been working so well on the original that I believe you can get by just fine with a single battery. We have, of course, the WizBlock Mesh Tastic kit that comes with the lower module, solar panel, battery, battery holder, USB power cable, IPEX to SMA cable, and finally the antenna. Now, one important thing I should note on getting antennas from Amazon many of them have terrible SWR around 915 megahertz. But I was able to find this one that comes with the antennas and SMA to IPEX cables that are needed to connect to the WIS block. Tested the SWR on these myself and the levels were good for the 915 megahertz range that we'll be working with. This comes in a package of two antennas. I imagine most people will be building multiple of these boxes. If you are interested in the antenna from the original, I'll include a link to that one as well. But that will double the cost of the antenna and you will also need to purchase a separate IPEX to N connector cable for this one as that antenna has an end connector on it. The first thing we're going to do is take out this mounting panel from the enclosure so we can mount the parts to it. And we also don't want this in there when we start to cut into it. As far as mounting the whiz block, in the original I reused the mount that came with the little whiz block solar panel and put it in the new enclosure. That likely won't be an option for many of you, so for this new one, Rack Wireless offers this nice WizBlock enclosure kit that also comes with a battery holder, which we'll need. Let's go ahead and mount the Wiz base to the mounting panel we took out of the enclosure. Go ahead and grab a marker and line up the Wiz base where you want it in the panel. This spot where I have it here is a good spot for it. Then mark two spots that line up with the holes in the grid of the panel that we're mounting to. With those marked, we can go ahead and drill in the two holes. I'm using a number 24 bit for this, but if you don't have a numbered drill bit set, the closest would be a 5 30 seconds bit. Now that we have the holes drilled, we can go ahead and mount it to the panel using two stainless half inch number 6 32 machine screws. I got these from Home Depot, but they should be readily available from many hardware stores. The hole I drilled was a bit close to where the battery holder mounts. I recommend mounting the battery holder before marking the holes to drill to avoid this. Next we'll need to solder the power connector to the battery holder. Before doing this, it's very important that we make sure we have the polarity right. Having this wrong will fry your whiz block. If you look at the WizBlock's connectors, you'll see a plus sign where the positive side should go. This is on both the power and the solar connectors. Plug your cable in and make sure the red wire is on the side with the plus sign. With that confirmed, we can get the battery holder ready. Having a helping handset will be helpful for this part, and I'll include links to all the tools used in this in the video description if you need them. Here I've mounted the battery holder on one and the wire on another. Go ahead and solder the wires together and make sure you're soldering the red to the positive side of the battery holder and black to the negative side. Once you've got that soldered up, we can go ahead and mount the battery holder to the whiz base. Inside the bag that the whiz base came in, you'll have two screws that you can use to mount the battery holder to it. The two pre-existing holes that the whiz base came with, this is where the two solder points that we solder to will fit in there. Then you can go ahead and screw the two screws to secure it to the whiz base itself. 
The bag will also contain various sizes of these mounting screws. Find the four smallest ones and screw them into the holes where the whiz block will mount to the whiz base. We can now mount the whiz block on the mounts using the remaining screws that we use to mount the battery holder. The next thing we'll do is cut a hole into the enclosure. If you look at the back of the solar panel here, you'll see there's a box where the connections are. We need to cut a similar size hole into the enclosure so the panel can sit flush against it for applying the adhesive. Grab a measuring device to measure and mark the door of the enclosure with the following measurements. 2 inches from the top, 3 quarters of an inch from each side, and 2 and 3 quarters from the bottom. The hole itself will end up being 1 and 5 eighths by 2 and 3 eighths. Once you got that measured and marked up, you'll need a Dremel tool and cutting bit to cut the hole. Be sure to wear safety goggles as there can sometimes be plastic bits flying towards your face. It smells terrible, so be sure to cut this outside or at least in a very well ventilated area. Once you're done cutting the hole in the enclosure's door, you may have to file down some of the melted plastic so that the solar panel can fit flush against it. We're now ready to apply the adhesive, but first check the fitment and make sure that the solar panel is able to fit flush on the enclosure. After confirming fitment, apply a bead of the adhesive in a complete circle around the hole so we can ensure that it's watertight. I'm using liquid nails for this and I'll include a link to this in the video description apply some additional adhesive for the rest of the surface as well. Now we can carefully feed the wires through the hole and mount the solar panel so it's flush against the enclosure. Then we can make any adjustments if needed to align it with the enclosure. The next thing we'll need to do is drill a hole for the IPEX to SMA antenna cable. I'm using a quarter inch drill bit for this and I'm just eyeballing it to get it close to the center of the top here. After getting the hole drilled, unscrew the nut off of the SMA connector and then we want to make sure it fits in the hole properly. Once we've done that, we need to waterproof the hole and to do this I'm using this rubber sheet to cut a section out of it to make a gasket for the SMA connector. Now press the SMA connector hard against the rubber piece we just cut out to leave an imprint on it. We're going to use this as a guide to cut a hole into the rubber piece. Just make sure that the hole itself is smaller than the imprint. Once that's done, peel off any protective layer off of the rubber and then we can go ahead and push the SMA connector through the gasket and then finally put it through the hole we drilled in the enclosure. Then go ahead and grab the hardware we unscrewed off the SMA connector earlier and screw that back on and then tighten it to secure the connector in place. You may need to use tools on each side to tighten it properly. Next we'll need to make a cable that will plug into the USB cable that's coming from the back of the solar panel and plug that into the solar charge controller port on the whiz block. I thought I had an extra cable for the solar connector, but I don't, so I won't be able to demonstrate that. It's fairly simple though, it's just a matter of cutting a USB cable and stripping the wires, then connect the negative and positive to the wires that go to the solar charge controller. Like I mentioned earlier though, be sure that you get the polarity right and confirm that the positive wire coming from the USB cable is going to the side with the plus sign on the whiz block. Now we're ready to mount the pole mounting hardware. You'll notice these two holes on the top of the enclosure that aren't threaded. We'll need to make our own threads using these half inch number 10-32 machine screws that we'll also be using to mount this to the enclosure. 
lay the enclosure flat. I have mine sitting on a towel to protect the solar panel, but you could do this step before putting the panel on. Go ahead and grab a screwdriver and start applying force to the hole while turning the, the screw. This will be hard at first, but it'll get easier once you get it started. Continue tightening until you get to about this point and it starts getting harder to turn. Next we'll need the number 10 screw, a washer, and a nut. Screw the nut all the way on and then go ahead and put the washer on. Now go ahead and place the mount on the enclosure and line the hole up with one of these slots. This won't be the final resting spot, but line it up on one of the end of the slots closest to the center so there's room to fit the screwdriver in. Go ahead and tighten the screw, but leave it loose enough to move the mount around since we need to do the other side. Then after you do the same thing for the other side, adjust so it's level with the enclosure, and then use the nut to finish tightening since the screwdriver is not able to access the screw when it's in its final resting place. With that mounted, all that's left is to install the hose clamp-like parts that will allow you to mount it to a pole. Now if you're just mounting to the top of a mast, you won't need anything else. But if you're like my situation where the top of the mast already has an antenna on it, you can use one of these J-pole mounts to mount the device a bit away from the mast. With all of that done, we're finally ready for the final step of putting everything in the enclosure, connecting the solar panel, and connecting the battery. Go ahead and grab the mounting panel and place it inside the enclosure, then tighten it back up. Then we'll connect the BLE antenna, which is the Bluetooth antenna for the device. Then connect the LoRa antenna, which is the SMA antenna we have on the outside of the enclosure. It's very important that we have these antennas connected before powering on the device. Powering it on before connecting these could burn the radio of the device. Now we can go ahead and connect the solar panel USB cable we made to the solar charge controller port on the whiz block. And then connect the battery holder wires to the power port on the whiz block. Make one final check that you have the polarity correct on these. Once that's done, we're ready to power everything on by inserting the battery. Again, make sure you have the polarity right when putting the battery in the holder so you don't burn up your whiz block. Ask me how I know. And if it lights up after inserting the battery, we have success. So that'll do it for this build video, but in my next video we'll go over flashing the firmware on the device. Even if you get the WizBlock Mesh-tastic starter kit, it may not have the latest firmware on it. So I'll show you how to flash firmware on the next video, and we'll also do some range tests with our new setup. Hopefully you found this video informative and useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you all and have a good one.